Welcome, my friends, to week two of Be Formed. So this starts with day eight and goes through um, uh, day 15. Today, we're going to be talking about the main aisle uh, of the church. But first, we're going to do a little review. We've talked about the transitions from the parking lot into the church. So going from the profane to this sacred place in the church. A lot of churches have a plaza or a piazza out front, like we have here at Notre Dame. That's kind of a sign that we're, we're entering uh, someplace different. The facade or the front of the church often has, you know, statues and signage and words to say, kind of point to something sacred inside. And then we go into the narthex or the vestibule, which is the last place before, you know, going into the church. And then we go to the door. And I want us to be aware that when we, you know, pull the door open that we're entering this, the sacred place of the church. Last week, then we talked about the baptismal font and we talked about the baptismal font is normally by the entrance of the church because, you know, it's when we are baptized, we enter the family of God. We become beloved sons and daughters of, of God, the father. And then it begins this journey toward heaven. And so it's this spiritual journey, but the main aisle of the church represents this journey from the baptismal font, you know, up to the altar, which is signifies heaven. Um, and when we're baptized, we're dying to our old self and rising with Christ to new life. And our destiny is heaven. If we Let's look at the main aisle. So when you look from the back of the church to the front of the church, um, you know, we have the aisle to the altar. And, and normally in most churches, I'm not saying all, most churches, the altar is raised, maybe a few steps, maybe more. And it's kind of that, that journey upward, that, that ascent toward that place. You know, in scripture, whenever you hear about mountains, you think about, oh, something special is going to happen here. This is signifying this encounter with God. So again, it's our journey from that baptism, which we have at the entrance to the church, up to the altar, which represents heaven, this encounter with God. Um, we're going to talk more about the altar in, in a few weeks, but it's the priest, you know, and the deacon that go up to the altar. Like when in the Old Testament, the, the, the high priest would enter the Holy of Holies, that sacred place where that encounter with, with God happens. In the Catholic Church, the, the priest is that representative that uh, is the the mediator, if you if you will, uh, between God and man. He's in persona Christi, acting in the person of Christ. It's at the altar where heaven meets earth in the Eucharist, and we'll talk more about the Eucharist, um, you know, in season four after the New Year. But th let's look at this main aisle and look at five different processions that we have at Mass and what these processions signify. All processions represent this pilgrim church on a journey. They represent the fact that this life is not our home. This world is not our home, that heaven is our destiny. And whenever you see the aisle in church, think about this is my, my journey uh, on earth to heaven, um, that we're a people on the move. So this is a sacramental sign. It's pointing to something deeper, this, this main aisle. The first procession is the, the entrance procession. So, and granted, in COVID and out of COVID, things may look a little different. But normally, outside of COVID, we have the processional cross, you know, the altar servers, um, and then might have a deacon carrying the book of the Gospels, and, and then the priest. And so to think about that, it, it's always led by the crucifix. And the crucifix is facing forward. So the people in the procession can't really see Jesus, but we know he's there and he's always leading us on this journey back to heaven. So if you think about that, uh, you know, in life's journey, we don't always see Jesus, but we know he's there. We know that he's leading us back to the Father. The second procession that we have that shows that we're a people on the move, we're pilgrims, we're sojourners, is the, the book of the Gospels. And this is not a big one down the main aisle. It might use a little bit of the aisle, but often it's a short procession. But it's this procession of, of the good news of Jesus Christ that is then proclaimed for us to say, 
on this journey toward heaven, we need Jesus. We need the good news uh, because this life, this journey is not easy. It's very difficult. The third procession is the offertory. Again, outside of COVID, we will have usually a family will bring up the bread and the wine and then maybe uh, part of the financial offering. So we offer back to God what God has already given us. So he's given us bread. He's given us wine. He's given us all the gifts that we have and we offer them back to him. And that bread and wine then that he's given us, we offer back to him and they become the body and blood of Christ. The fourth procession is the communion procession. So each one of us uh, that go forward for communion, um, we go up for this foretaste of heaven. You know, we, we hear in scripture that there's a heavenly banquet with, you know, choice wines and foods. And at mass, when we receive communion, we partake in that heavenly banquet. That's why I really want to encourage those who, you know, um, who may be getting used to watching mass on TV. Now, I know if you're immune compromised, you have to be careful, but please don't stay away from mass. Uh, if, if you can go, uh, we can't receive communion unless we're sick, you know, at home or in the hospital, but it's at church coming down this procession of the main aisle that we get a taste of heaven in Jesus in the Eucharist. We encounter the risen Lord. We become one with Christ and we're fed by Christ. And then the, the fifth procession is the recessional. So on the way out of church, a, a, after Mass is ended, we say, go and announce the gospel of the Lord. Again, we're led by the processional cross facing outward. It's Christ who leads us out. And we process out to proclaim the good news that we've heard in the word of God and to proclaim Christ that we've received sacramentally, body, blood, soul, and divinity that Jesus died for our sins. He rescued us from our sins. So the main aisle is a sacramental sign of our, our journey from earth to heaven, from baptism until death. It really struck me last week as I was celebrating uh, a funeral mass of, of that journey. So what happens at a funeral mass? That we meet the casket by the baptismal font at the entrance to the church and what do we do is we take holy water from the baptismal font, we sprinkle the casket, and we say these words, in the waters of baptism, John died with Christ. May he now share with him his, in his resurrection. So we're reminded of our baptism. And then what do we do with the casket? We cover it with a pall, which is a white uh, garment. What do we do at baptism? We give the child a white garment representing this new life in Christ. And so this uh, Paul that goes over the casket is a reminder of our baptism that we died with Christ to rise with him. And so even though we may be sad at a funeral, uh, it should be a time of celebration too because it's, it's celebrating the resurrection of Christ. And so then what do we do? We have another procession. So we process with the casket from the baptismal font up toward the altar and uh, what happens, what's waiting there at the altar is the, the baptismal candle, the Easter candle. So when somebody's baptized, the Easter candle is lit. That Easter candle represents Jesus, the presence of Christ in the world. At baptism, we light a small baptismal candle from the Easter candle. We give it to the parents and godparents and say, you know, receive the light of Christ. It is your responsibility to keep the, this light of Christ alive in this child and then once they become of age, then it's their responsibility to carry it forward. And so the caskets process forward with pallbearers. So there's, there's always accompaniment on this journey. We can't do this alone. So we have our family members and friends walking with us. Christ in the Easter candle is waiting there for us. And we celebrate that person's, God willing, their, their entrance into new life in heaven. Their whole life was this journey from baptism to death, which is the doorway to eternity. Let's also look at the other sacraments as they pertain to this main aisle. Look at the Eucharist, for example. In our first communion, we're normally accompanied by our parents. They walk with us up that main aisle on this journey um, to receive Jesus for the first time. And then after that, at every Mass, we come forward to get a little taste of heaven where that procession is you know, we're on this difficult journey, 
but Christ wants to feed us on the way, just like they gave manna uh, to the Israelites on, in their uh, Exodus journey in the desert. Jesus gives himself, this is my body given up for you. This is my blood poured out for you. Confirmation. We have somebody else accompanying us, right? We have our confirmation sponsor or our godparent. They journey up with us down that main aisle where um, we're confirmed in the Holy Spirit, that Holy Spirit that we received at our baptism. Holy matrimony. You know, think about the bride being accompanied by her, her father up that aisle. And then he hands over his daughter to her, her new groom. And it's their responsibility then, the bride and the groom, to help one another get to heaven. And they, you know, they come down that aisle for their, you know, uh, first communion for their kids. They baptize their kids at, the, at that baptismal font. Um, ultimately, our goal is to meet our bridegroom, which is Jesus in heaven. Holy Orders. I remember clearly walking down the main aisle of the cathedral, and part of the rite is we prostrate ourselves um, on the ground uh, before the altar, before the bishop, God's representative, to say, I lay down my life for you. We become other Christ as we are ordained. And reconciliation, we hear in Scripture to say, before you process to the altar, you know, if there's somebody that you need to reconcile with or with God, go reconcile and then come back to receive communion. And finally, the anointing of the sick. You know, we can be anointed many times. It's not just last rites, uh, but, you know, we can be anointed many times during our lifetime. But that last time, you know, that we're anointed, we're prepared for heaven, we might receive, um, you know, Holy Communion, which is, you know, that food for the journey. And then, as we talked about, our, our, our casket, uh, goes from that baptismal font with the Paul, Paul bearers accompanying us to that last stop uh, at the altar before, God willing, we are celebrating eternal life. So hopefully when we, when we see that main aisle, we think about this journey back to heaven. We think about, you know, my own baptism on my way, you know, uh, to heaven. I'd like to briefly look at the Lectio Divina that we're going to ask you to do uh, sometime this week. It's John chapter 14, 1 to 6. It's, on, it's underneath week two, topic, the main aisle, Lectio Divina. I'm going to give you just a little bit of my reflections on the scripture. It's six verses. Verse one, it says, Do not let your hearts be troubled. Have faith in God. Have faith also in me. So when we enter a Catholic church. I remember when I first entered a Catholic church, I thought there's something different here. And now I know what it was. It was the presence of Jesus. Um, I felt this peace, this comfort. Do not let your hearts be troubled. The Lord is always there waiting for us. Verse two, it says, my father's house has many dwelling places and he has prepared a place for me. So I want you to think about the next time and each time you come into the church as you go to mass, Think about this is the Father's house. He's prepared a dwelling place for me in heaven. But also, as I genuflect and go into my pew, I'm, I'm taking my place here in, in his church, the sacred place, um, as I prepare for this, this journey, this symbolic journey to heaven. Verse 3, he says, I will come back to you and take you to myself. That this life is just, a, not just, but it's a preparation for heaven. And Mass is a, a foretaste of heaven. Verse 4, he says, You know the way. You know the way back to me. And who is the way? We're going to hear it. Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. This main aisle is this, we're following Jesus, who is the way, the truth, and the life, uh, back to the Father. In, in verse 5, St. Thomas says, How can we know the way? It's so honest. He speaks for all of us. We want to know how to get to heaven. And then Jesus answers it, I am the way, the truth, and the life. So let us make the Lord the center of our lives. Um, so just want to help us and ask us to be aware as we enter church, all of these, these symbols that are going on are remind, reminding us of this journey that we're on. Let's not just randomly, you know, kind of make the sign of the cross with the holy water and just plop down in a seat, but to say, wow, I'm in God's house. 
I'm on this journey back to heaven. I'm here to hear the word of God, to receive Holy Communion, to follow Christ, and then to be sent out to share his good news. So let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you and praise you for uh, your son, Jesus, who leads us on this pilgrim journey. We thank you for helping us realize that this world is not our home, that heaven is. Help us to appreciate the beauty of our churches, the beauty of the Mass, that it is a foretaste of heaven leading on this journey, leading us on the journey back to you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Have a blessed week, everyone, and we'll see you next week. God bless.